How's it going? Here we are again at a Nissan Juke. Today we're doing a valve cover gasket replacement. I know it seems difficult right now because all the stuff is in the way, but it's actually really easy. I apologize, it's raining, uh, but we're going to try to shoot this as best we can with not that much battery life or footage space, So, because uh, I'm using my phone. Here we go. Let's jump to it. So there's a stopper here, I believe about here and here, that you need to pry on. If you pry on, it's hard enough. It will pop out of its little grommets. There's one right here as well. This just pops right off. Suggestion if you're working in the rain like I am, put stuff underneath the car or inside the car, that way you don't get your tools all messed up. This big flange right here is gonna have to come off. Don't worry about any of this stuff right now except for this hose. We're gonna remove this, because all this stuff's gonna be able to move at the same time. I'm gonna take off this eight millimeter, this 10 millimeter, and back here, these two 12 millimeters, and then I'll show you from there. So now that a few things have been removed from this right here, we're going to take off this black air boot right here. Best way to take this off is to loosen it up uh, right over here on this 10 millimeter right here. You shouldn't have to remove it from here, but if you want to do that, you, to give yourself some extra room, you can. Uh, you're going to want to take this little hose off right here. Just need some hose clamps to be able to take that off. You want to disconnect this sensor right here, and you want to disconnect this clamp down here. You can use a you know, long screwdriver, come from underneath, however you may want to do that. But after you remove those, I'll show you how to take this off. You pretty much will just have to pull from here. One more thing on the removal of this air boot right here is that this hose will have to be disconnected from it, but it, to give yourself more room to get the valve cover out since it's underneath this, it's best to disconnect this hose from over here, right here. Uh, that way you don't have to necessarily remove it from here because this is probably coming out of the car. If you remove it from here, you probably won't have to disconnect this. Suggestion, uh, pull this hose off of this little clamp to give yourself more space to move this, move this uh, clamp a little bit further away. Uh, again, another suggestion, uh, I would recommend taking off this hose clamp off of this hose right here. You can see I've already done it and it just pulls right off. And then after you've done that and you remove move this clamp up, this just pulls right off as well. And because this is out of the way, you can actually just pull this hose right out. It's out of your way now. When removing this or disconnecting this black air boot from this area here, you can see that I've loosened it up enough to where this clamp is not a problem anymore. And you don't want to start pulling it on things like this tab right here. You want to pull it from where it has a decent amount of structure because it's made out of plastic. You may even want to put a flat blade screwdriver in between the area between, you know, the boot and this flange right here. That way you can pry it up a little bit to loosen it up. That way it's easier to pull out. Again, being careful, this is made of plastic. You don't want to break it. Now if you pull on this, outward, kind of rock it back and forth like I just did, you saw it separate just now. And it's still attached to this area here, but like I said, you probably don't have to remove it all the way. If you want to remove it from here to give yourself some extra room, be my guest. It only helps you. So I'm actually going to disconnect this section right here so that I can show you with more space uh, to be able to work on the car. I also want to show you that this wiring harness that's connected to this sensor is attached to this black air boot, and you want to disconnect it from its clip. Uh, you, it's hard to get to, you have to get it from underneath, and you're going to have more space to do that the more you remove before you actually take it out. Being aware, you don't want to pry on this too hard and rip this harness off as you're removing it. I'm also going to remove this hose here in order to give us more room to be able to tilt this end up to try to disconnect this clip from this side over here. I'll show you in a second. Again, uh, if this video helps you, uh, there is an icon on the bottom right hand corner of your screen. If you're looking at it on a computer, you should be able to subscri subscribe there to, you know, show me that this is actually worth my while and, uh, you know, help me help you basically. Uh, again, after you've removed all of this other stuff, you can actually tilt this pretty far up. Let me show you. So tilt this all pretty far up there and see that clip over there and it gives you a lot more space now to be able to take that clip off without damaging the harness. Now with everything disconnected from this, we can actually pull this out of the car. You want to put this someplace safe. I'm just putting it here for now. Uh, but you know, put it someplace safe so you don't break it. Again, it's made of plastic. With all that stuff removed, 
Now you will be able to remove this because you've disconnected these other hoses that had it in the way. And you don't actually have to disconnect everything. Like some people will be taking these 10 millimeters off of this, pulling this out of the way. You can do that if you want. But if you pull up straight from here so that you don't damage any of those threads down there, you can actually pull this whole thing over to the side out of your way. And if you need to move it more, you can. Or remove more, you can. But this is giving you good access to the valve cover. You shouldn't have to remove more than that. At least from this device here. So this would be a good time to put some rags or something in these orifices so that you don't drop something down into them because that would be very, very bad. In fact, you don't want to shove a rag too hard into it, really. You know, it almost suggests maybe not even doing that. But don't leave too many tools up here where stuff can fall down into these. You know, cover them up with something like this. This is out of my way, yet still covering it up. That way stuff doesn't fall down there. Now this is a good time to disconnect all of these coil packs for the spark plugs. And this hose right here, this is a breather hose. Like I said, just air hose. So you can, you know, since you've already been removing these air hoses, you might as well do this now so you're kind of used to that sort. So to help get these, uh, the ignition coil packs out. There's 10 millimeter bolts on all four of them and to help you unclip them because these don't always pull out. This is the only one that pulls out without you having to really remove it. If you pop them out it makes it easier for you to undo the clip because there's not really much space underneath it because it's like almost flush with this and you can't really get a good grip on it but if you remove the 10 millimeter bolt, pop them up, it's easier for you to disconnect them because you don't want to break these connectors. All right, something important to point out here. This hose right here looks a lot like all the other hoses, but if I'm not mistaken, it has coolant running through it, going down to the turbo over there. If you follow this line down over here, well, look, there's coolant that runs through these, and this goes right into this, this section right here. Again, coolant, so I would not remove this hose if you can avoid it. It appears that once you remove the bolts off of the valve cover, this should be able to slide out from underneath it. Right now I have a coil pack sitting on it, so there wasn't as much room, but you see, this thing does have a lot of give without you having to remove it. Now a hose you can remove to give yourself more space is this hose right here. You're going to want to disconnect it probably from over here. There's not really any space over there to do it with. So I would recommend doing it here, and once you've removed it enough, it just pops off. You loosen up this clamp and you can pull it off as you do it. I loosened it up beforehand uh, so that I can do it with one hand because I'm holding a camera with the other. Alright, here we are. We're going to next want to get this heat shield out of the way because it is in the way of some of the valve cover gasket bolts. There is a 10 millimeter here, 10 millimeter here, and back over here, 10, mm, 10 millimeter here. Lighting's not the greatest, but you can see that there is some residue from where the valve cover gasket is leaking down there. More of it is on the back side than on the front, because that's just that tends to be what happens. The G-force and whatnot push it back that way. Underneath this heat shield here for the exhaust, it's to prevent heat from kind of messing everything up down here. Uh, as you, once you start to loosen these up, you'll notice it does move. It's not connected to the lower heat shield down there toward the bottom, so it's just those three bolts that hold it on. And uh, once you loosen up those bolts, this should come out of the way. You may have to finagle it around a few things. You may have to remove one more thing. If that happens, I will show you what you need to do. In order to create more space to get this stuff out of here, I'm going to remove this 10 millimeter uh, bolt that holds this plate on here. I may also be removing these bolts in order to get this uh, the other black plate that's underneath it off so that we can get more room because with these hoses out of the way over here, this will be easier to get out. I don't want you to have to bend anything getting this out. You could also take out this oxygen sensor if you felt so necessary. I'm going to try to do it without having to do that though, because sometimes people don't always have the tool for this. So these are two 8 millimeters, and there's a 10 millimeter right here in order to get this plate off. I also disconnected the oxygen sensor connector, which is connected right here. Disconnected it. Pull it out of the way. I'm going to take these bolts off and show you what it looks like. Alright, so with the bolts removed from this, you can leave this section of the connector attached. Move all this junk out of the way. We're going to move this, take off this hose right here. We are going to take this hose off all the way off. I was hoping to not have to, and honestly you can without having to, but to show you an easier way to get the stuff off the vehicle, 
There we go. Gonna loosen this up, pull it out of the way, and uh, well, I have the other, and you kind of need my other hand for this part, so you just basically put your hose clamps on there, take the hose off. Pretty simple. Okay, so I want to show you this. This hose is attached here since we fully removed it. You might want to put, you know, maybe some nail polish or something on this end and on this end, not where it goes inside the engine, but somewhere on so that you can tell, oh, this part goes to this part. You could also just take it off as it is in the car, set it aside the exact same way it goes in the car, that way you don't forget. But putting a little marker on there, like I said, would not be a bad idea so that you can get it out easily. Now to show you how to get this heat shield out, you're pretty much just going to, because of the way that the ear on this end is attached is shaped it doesn't really want to come out around this very easily so you're going to want to pull this carefully not to pry or break anything but get it past the wires over here that's why we remove that stuff as you can tell it's getting hung up over there you want this to pull out and over the valve cover it's hard to do with one hand be a lot easier with two but basically you're going to want this to slip up all the way to where it's basically centered over the valve cover gasket and then the only thing holding it back is this tube like I said and it just comes right out you're going to pretty much do something similar to that when you're removing the valve cover from the car you might be able to see it in this shot I think you can yeah there you go there's oil back there from where the valve cover gasket is leaking it's hard to tell with a phone camera, but you can see it's all back there. It's actually, you know, pools of oil back there. Now that you remove the heat shield, you can see from where all the heat is coming from, there's a very clear leak on the back of this valve cover gasket. Now we're at the point of removing these bolts. You want to remove them little bit by little bit. You don't want to remove one at a time. You know, start removing them in the kind of a cross pattern, you know. That way everything comes out evenly. And don't forget about these ones in the middle. Before we do this though, we're going to want to remove the wiring harness from the valve cover gasket because it's attached. There's a section here, you just put pliers, squeeze it, pull it out. Like that. Same thing over here. Put pliers in, squeeze it, pull it out. I think it is also attached down underneath here. This will be difficult to deal with. We may remove this, we may not. Uh, but once we start removing the valve cover gasket from the vehicle, it might be easier to get to this. It is also possible we may have to remove this foam piece, which is just a foam piece, and comes out very easily. You just kind of pull it out of the way. I'm not going to do it right now because we might leave it. But that might be the most difficult part left of this job, is that little connector. Back over to this little plastic flange here. Don't break this, obviously. You're going to want to pull it up over. And when you do that, you'll realize there's some wires attached. These are ground wires still attached to the engine compartment, you're just going to want to pull this back far enough to where it's out of the way behind this, leave these attached. Okay, so now you're going to want to start removing these in a crisscross pattern, like I said, so that you, you know, don't loosen it up. You don't want to do one at a time usually, and like, like, uh, and you don't, like I said, you don't want to forget these. You also don't want to, uh, you also don't want to actually I forget about these guys here, but when you put it back on, you definitely want to do it that same way. That's why I'm telling you to remove it that way as well, because you don't want to go one at a time. It'll squish down the gasket in one section, and it won't it won't um, compress, you know, evenly. Uh, this there's a bolt back here to help remove uh, this wiring harness. There's some clips you can mess around with, but I would rather not mess around with these. There's a bolt that goes right here, and it's hard to access from here. But if you go back here. That's an opening right there where that plate is. My finger's pointing toward it. And if you can, you can get a long extension and a 10 millimeter deep socket onto the 10 millimeter that's there. This is the best way to remove it. It's the easiest way to remove it if you're able to do so. The only thing I stress caution, stress caution with is when you're removing the bolt, uh, you want to grab onto the bolt with this other hand over here. That way you don't lose the bolt down here because uh, it's pretty easy to do that in that, in that area. Alright, now the fun truly begins with the bolts all removed. You may have to use a flat blade screwdriver, a nice good thick one so you get a good grip and you don't mess anything up. Maybe wedge in between 
wedge in between the space so that you can lift up the valve cover. Otherwise it might be stuck and it may not want to lift up very hard. And you don't want to pry on the wrong things. Otherwise you might break something. Now that it's loose, I'm going to attempt to take this out. Uh, maybe not at first on camera, that way I have both hands. And if I can, I'll show you a shot of it. So the way that they have designed this, uh, this harness with the clip on it, it's just a zip tie that's actually you know, holding that connector on. And the way that they designed it is they didn't think about anyone ever taking it off. So in order to actually get access to where you normally put some, some pliers on it or something, you're going to have to remove like half the car in order just to get to that little piece. So what we're going to do is rather than disconnect half the car, this is just, this is just a zip tie. So I'm going to do this carefully with my other hand, but you can see right there, we can cut this carefully. Like I said, I'm going to do this with the other hand, but you can cut that very carefully. Don't damage any of the wiring here, just cut the zip tie itself, and that will get remove this problem for us, and we can always put another zip tie on there later. Alright, my phone's giving me a bunch of grief, uh, but I don't have much space or battery life here on my phone, so I'm going to try to do this uh, one more time here, but... So, you're going to want to pull this wiring harness very much out of the way so that this gets a lot of access to be able to move up. If this moves up high enough and is able to clear these, where are they, these plastic things that stick up out of here, there's one on the other side too. If you get, if you get enough space to clear that, it should pull up. And once they clear on the bottom, then you can pull this out on this side on the left here, if I'm not mistaken. I'm going to try to do this carefully with both hands though. I'm just trying to give you a general visualization. So again, we don't want to worry about removing this hose. We don't want to pry on it too much, but it does give it some difficulty coming out. You're going to, you know, like I said, we're prying it outward this way, up and over, so that these plastic prongs can clear this area. Pull it outward. Once you get it enough out of the way, this side should be able to clear my actually I actually got a screwdriver sort of in the way now but it's just to show you spacing and as you can tell I'm doing this one handed right now okay so you can do this carefully with two hands and be able to get it all off here comes the gasket with it there you go it's out of the car so we can make sure to keep our area clean there is going to be some oil residue on this and we're going to want to spray this off with some brake cleaner and clean it all off especially the grooves all around the edge where the valve cover gasket goes. Don't forget about these spark plug seals here. This car does have spark plug seals and they decided that they wanted to hang out on the car. Don't forget to remove them and don't forget you're putting new spark plug seals in. These actually, it actually broke off right there where it's normally attached because it's old and weak now. All right, well, this is a decent look at the mess you're getting into if you decide to do this job. If you saw a shot of the very beginning, there's a lot of stuff that's been moved out of the way. And uh, this is old and practically like plastic now. It's so brittle, it'll just break off in your hand. So you definitely want to be very careful taking this all off because it's just going to come off in pieces and you don't really want it in the engine compartment. So definitely clean it off very carefully. And then you're going to want to wipe all this oil residue around the edges, especially uh, with some cleaner. I'd recommend carb cleaner if you can. That way it doesn't really harm anything in the engine. If you use brake cleaner, that evaporates so fast, you're going to have the same situation. It doesn't really harm anything. So just be careful, like I said, cleaning it off, but definitely get this all off. I'm going to try to show you as much of this job as I can before my battery dies. You're going to want this whole strip coming off in one big piece if you can. This actually, this valve cover set is uh, actually a one piece unit. It's separated like I said over here, it basically broke off right there because it's old and brittle. And you don't want that to happen again, so messing up my phone with a little bit of oil here. But if you very carefully, don't make markings on this nice surface here, but you can just sort of pry this up. And if you pry not on these parts here, just let, let these stay attached, just these parts here. You know, you'll be able to get these off. Don't forget about this. If you take them off one by one, carefully. Oh, sorry, <laughs> hands in the way. Carefully, whole piece comes off 
there you go. Now I'm going to wipe this all off with a good rag first, and then I'm going to spray it all down and then clean it up that way. Do it in like a couple of phases. All right, there you can see nice clean surface now for the gasket. All right, so sometimes when you have a valve cover gasket, I'm just test fitting it to see if it's the right gasket, just, just to make sure, and it is. And now I'm going to put a little bit of adhesive in certain areas. Uh, normally you don't need to put too much on these because there's, like I said, not ridges. This is actually a flat surface. But I'm going to put some on the corners so that when this goes in, the corners are usually where the gasket fails the most. I noticed that on the factory setup there was a little bit of adhesive on the spark plug seal, so I'll put some there as well. And then I'll put some on the opposite surface of the gasket because you don't want to just put it on this side of the gasket where it goes in. There's another side of the gasket, meaning that valve cover will be on this side of the gasket, engine will be on this side of the gasket. Valve cover, engine. So you want some on both sides, obviously. Again, you don't need that much because this is a flat surface gasket. All right, you can see I've got some sealant on it that way. I put it on like this because you have to remember it's going to be flipped over like this in the car. So you want to make sure you're putting your sealant in the right places. <laughs> you can see some, it's a little bit more difficult to see because it's a metallic surface and it's a gray kind of sealant, but you know, I could just seeing it around here, 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 here. Again, not much, this is just to help it seal. I'm gonna not probably be able to show you very much of me putting this back in because in order to not have sealant go all over the place and the gasket not fall out in the wrong places, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna wanna have both hands for it. So I may not be able to show you how it actually goes right in there, but you saw the way it came out. Pretty much fish in through here and then get those two tabs that are on the bottom to go over and then by then it's pretty much just put it back on. So I paid attention to where this little tab here was when I was taking the old one off. When it's sitting in the car the tab went back here in this general area. So when I put it on, on the vehicle when it's upside down like this I want the tab to actually back be back here where it goes. So now I'm gonna pop this back in. Alright, so there it is. You want to make sure this is all the way pushed in because you don't want this coming out. It's going to probably try to come out on you while you're putting it in. The, ad the adhesive helps prevent that, but like I said, you want to make sure it's all the way pushed in. That way it actually compresses finely into its proper grooves. There's a little channel around the edge that where this all goes in. You can notice that it almost, it's almost disappeared into the valve cover gasket when all the way pushed in. Again, <coughs> don't forget the orientation of how this goes in. The oil fill cap is on the bottom right hand side there as you can see. You might want someone to help you hold a few wires or what hoses, what not back as you put this in. I'm not going to have anyone here to help me, so I'm going to put my camera down so that I can try to get this in there properly. So at this point, I slid the unit in like this into where its position is right now. Minding this cable back here, it wants to, you definitely want to keep this out of your way. It's still a little in my way right now, so what I'm going to do is pry it out of the way. You may have to lift the valve cover up a little bit more again, but I want this not behind it. I want this over here out of the way, see? So now it can... Oh, there you go, see? Pop it through there. You have the same issue on this wiring harness over here. You're going to want to slide it carefully. And you're going to want to check underneath and make sure that your... It's hard to see here, but your tabs are going into to the right places and not getting stuck and hung up on things. You're also going to want to check underneath there to make sure that the gasket's in the right place still and hasn't shifted. If this gasket shifts and is not connected to this valve cover properly, when you torque this down, you will have a leak afterwards and you would have just wasted your time. That's why I didn't show you me trying to mess around with it, putting it in with one hand. I'm showing you step by step as I go and doing it with two hands to make sure it goes on right. Again, so we got that's, that wiring harness out of the way, but right here, uh, this tab where this wiring harness came off of it's now stuck behind there So we're gonna want to you know pry this back <coughs> Pry this back out of the way of the tab Saw some shifting over there So we're gonna want to put the camera down and make sure we're doing this all properly Want to move this wiring harness again up and over this tab over here Okay, the camera is very low on battery life now Hopefully I don't run out completely while I'm shooting this but move it past that wiring harness now. It's past 
this wiring harness now is actually on there and everything is uniform. You might want to like kind of carefully lift it up in places that feel safe. Lift it up and just like drop it onto the perfect spot so that when you start torquing things down, it's not caught on anything. Lifting it up, putting it back down allows you to feel if it's in the right place or if something got pinched, gasket came off in the wrong spot. Again, line this all up. There's a hole right there where a bolt goes into. Pretty easy place to line up, but get it lined up in all the right places and then slowly start putting the bolts in. So I cleaned off the surfaces of these bolts a little bit here on the threading. That way they go in nice and easy. Again, you want to just barely start these on each of the bolts. Just barely get them started so that you can make sure they're all fitted in the right place. There we go, just barely started. Make sure it doesn't come off. That way you make sure it's actually in the right spot. Again, this is to line everything up nice and smooth and even and uniform. Because you might start putting these bolts in and then realize, uh-oh, one of them doesn't fit right and you have to kind of take them all out and move them over again. So now that you've started the, all of these bolts, you can begin tightening them all down. Again, like I said, go little bits at a time, little bit at a time on each one, do a cross pattern, not randomized, cross pattern, so that you can actually get these all on nice and uniform so that the gasket goes down nice and smooth, nice and uniform, not on really tight in one spot and then has to kind of morph itself in order to tighten itself somewhere else because you didn't do it uniformly. And again, these bolts are, uh, these are eight millimeter bolts, so they do not, again, do not need to be torqued down very tight. I believe these actually have uh, a max point, meaning they can't tighten much further than they do because of the way they were designed. Uh, but these are probably at about what you'd put the spark plugs to, probably like 10 foot-pounds. If you notice, these are really easy to get off. Uh, so you do not need much. I'd recommend tightening these down with a quarter inch ratchet if you could because you don't want to throw a torque wrench on here because it's probably going to be uh, not very accurate at that low of a torque spec and you might break off the bolt or damage something. So I'd recommend doing a hand tight like you would a spark plug, 10 foot-pounds maybe that much. You know, it really doesn't need to be on that tight. Uh, you don't want it to be too loose, obviously. You don't want it. Not, you don't want it to be like you didn't tighten them down. But hand tight till they're snug. You know, don't overdo it. Quarter inch ratchet doesn't give you much leverage, so that's what I recommend using with it. I'm tightening this on right by hand right now with no ratchet, so it's just for you know to show you guys. You really don't need these on that tight. I will do the final tightening. You know, cross cross pattern like I said with a quarter inch once I get to that point. First thing to do is put this wiring harness back. I apologize for the poor lighting. The sun decided to come out for some reason, even though it was all raining earlier while I was doing more of the difficult stuff. This passes right through there, as you can see. Drops down onto its place over there. Snug back behind over here. And then over here, you're going to want to pop these. This is really poor lighting, so I apologize. You may not be able to see much of this, but... You're gonna to wanna to get this hose back over its little hump right there. Clip these back in, clip, clip, clip. And then we're gonna mess around with this back over here. Put that bolt back in. Okay, well the sun decided to kind of move out of the way. So like I said, this wiring harness fed back behind these orifices over here, put back into its, put back onto its zip, zip tie over there. Clipped back in, fed over this tube, clipped back in. Now this over here is where we're at. I basically, to make this easier on myself, there's a bolt there. Probably hard to see, but there's a, there's a bolt there. I put the bolt in from this side and just fed this whole entire unit over here and then by hand, little bit by little bit, started the bolt from this side because it's really hard to get it from all the way over there. Now that it's started, I can put a long extension in a 10 millimeter and do the rest of it. With uh, this wiring harness situation now attached fully, uh, again, looking at this, I'm going to try to give you a better angle if the sun moves out of the way again, actually, with that, I'll come back to that. Putting the spark plugs, or the ignition coils back in, uh, pop them in like so. Don't put them in all the way, because again, you're going to want to pop these back in, like so. I'll show you another. 
pop it in. Now, you don't want it in all the way so that you can pop these on nice and easy. I was about to say, I said nice and easy, come on. All right, uh, this is the one that I put over here. I didn't actually need to take the connector off of this one. Sorry about that, you can see it was over there. And I can just pop this right back in. Pop in. Okay, sorry again. One of the slightly more difficult things to worry about with this vehicle is back in here where that bolt went in, you can, it's maybe hard to see in the photo, but you can basically get it by hand on on this area here as much as you can by hand. Then you're going to want to switch to, gosh, the sun's coming out right as I hit record. Okay, grab one of these, something about this long. You're going to come in from behind here. Slip it down in, and I can't see if it's actually getting there because of the glare. Again, the sun is my worst enemy right now, but you can see it, it's about there. You can get it to, there you go, you can get it to connect to it. Do the, as much as you can by hand before putting a ratchet on there, it'll help you out because there's not much room to move the ratchet on this side. And then, you know, put these on, get these bolts going and then we'll mess around with the tubes and stuff on this side. Alright, since I'm already on this side, I figured I'd show you this hose right here that you barely needed to dis you know, barely needed to attach. can go right back on pretty easily. And that's how we're going to do it. So I'll show you once it's on. Okay. Well, this is the part where I can't really show you any more of the reinstallation of everything because my phone died literally two seconds after the last shot you saw um, so everything's pretty straightforward from there though you're just putting everything back together it would have just been cool to show you guys everything from start to finish all the way through but the important parts are there that's the removal and you know the actual reinstallation of the valve cover itself everything else is pretty darn easy and I was pretty good about showing the steps of removal and you basically just follow those backwards to reinstall um, so hopefully you were able to get enough from the beginning of the video to be able to reinstall everything. You can also leave some comments and I can help walk you through it as well. Uh, so if you liked what you saw, you can subscribe, leave me a like, do as you will. There are more videos coming, of course, and uh, you know, thank you for your time.